Hi there, this is Makarov owner. I just had something I'd like to share. Uh, we have a 40 Conaline van. It's model E150 club wagon uh, with an automatic and my shifter lever came where it had no tension. It was really floppy. It wouldn't any longer go to park. You could start the van in neutral. You had the rest of your gears, but it did not shift as normal. It was just floppy and all over the place. So what I found was that there's a, a shift excuse me, right there, a steering shift tube, and that's a Dorman 905-100, and <clears throat> that's my replacement part. It was about $35. You can see how the old one had broken. See the joint? So, anyway, that's what had to come out of there. It's a little bit intimidating. So, the, the things about this that you should probably know, at the end of this assembly, down there in the bottom, there's a cable... Uh, that goes to the transmission The cable you I don't think you can see it from here uh, But it just pops off with pressure. So if you can take your hand and pull it off uh, That's what I did after I got this assembly loose So I loosened up basically from the bottom upwards. There are three clamps this lower one actually goes to uh, uh, a Gear that goes to the tube and that actually sets your shift position so, um, anyway, there's that. And what I use to take all these off, they're all Torx bits. And so I used these little, uh, I used a quarter inch wrench. And then this one is a stubby little T30. And then I had a T20. And then I had my impact gun with another uh, T20 for taking off all the body bolts. But everything, excuse me, everything was uh, Torx. The only thing that was Phillips was actually the little covers for the steering wheel. So anyway, once those clamps are all off um, and the assembly's loose, there's a pin you can see right here. That actually drives out from the bottom side. You'll have it loose. You drive that out and you can smack it with a hammer. It'll come out and then push a nail through it is what I did. And then down on the bottom end, there's another one that's similar to that. Both of those drive out. And so just line out your parts like you normally would, uh, you know, for disassembly and then reassemble in the same fashion. So um, I should also show you that with the shifter, in order to get this lower clamp back on, you have to pull the shifter back to release the spring tension so that you can get it into position. So that's, you're going to really fight it if you don't. So... Uh, and then as far as uh, the other parts of assembly, it's probably easiest just for me to go backwards. So the cable, like I say, was hand pressure. Once it's off and you're ready to put it back on, it just snaps back into place on that lower arm. Um, put your clamps on. My next process will actually be, there's a little um, dealy bop right here. This actually goes to your shift position and mine is broken. So if you have a broken shift position, um, needle this is what it is this stupid little plastic gear that snapped off so just I'm gonna ignore it it's, it goes up behind the dash it's gonna be more of a pain in the ass to deal with and I don't care I can feel it anyway so uh, the other thing that that I would show you is that <clears throat> for the key assembly that has to come out before you can take part of the plastic off so there's the body for the key so you have to put the key in you get it into position by rotating it and there's a detent on the bottom side of the steering wheel that I can't show you but it's underneath the top plastic cover uh, which is this guy here so when you have it it looks it looks like this um, so that's actually this covers up the key assembly you've got it you got to get that key out before you can remove the plastic and it has to come off so this lower assembly has to come off first and I actually put a cut in mine with a hacksaw to pull it loose because I couldn't figure out how to get the tilt wheel knob off it. And honestly, it's an old van with like 265,000 miles. So I really don't care. I just wanted to be able to get it, get it done, move on. It's not going to hurt anything. So um, anyway, those parts have to be put back on. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is putting this cover back on. I'm going to put on that little piece for the indicator. And then... Uh, take this uh, back up to position in order to drop it down like this there's actually uh, two forward nuts and two rearward nuts and they're both half inch drive so uh, three-eighths with a short extension and a half inch deep well 
you can drop it down like this after you get that plastic off no problem and then it's all just you know get that mounted back up there get that little uh, indicator back on get the uh, the plastic cover back in place and of course I have to put this little boot back in place so get the key assembly back on um, after I put the plastic in place and then I put the lower plastic on and then it's just back to putting the other trims back in place on the lower part of the dash and, and I'm in business. 35 bucks, it's a pain in the ass, it's a little intimidating. If you're scared to do it, take it to somebody. Uh, but it's gonna take you two to three hours for somebody that knows pretty well, you know, it's pretty mechanical to be able to do this. So uh, it's a rather inexpensive fix, but it's time consuming. So uh, anyway, have a good day. Bye.